Welcome to The Real Money Show, the number one eight seven seven eight silver the website, guildhallwealth.com. So happy you could join us. My name is Jeremy Wiseman. I'm joined by Jerry Karaya, and we'll be talking about gold and silver. A little later in the show, we want to talk about how long it takes to rec- recover if there's pullbacks in the market, if we do see a black swan event. And Jerry, it certainly feels like we're hurtling towards crisis. Um, later in the show, we'll also talk about population trap. Uh, what HSBC is saying about the commodity market, what Bill Gross is saying, um, what he's begging the Fed to do. But first, let's just talk about the state of affairs, shall we? I wanted to just throw out a few numbers for you, Jerry. The Federal Reserve last year lost $114 billion. They're effectively an insolvent central bank. So I think it's important moving forward for everyone who's considering what to do with your money, that the central bank, uh, for all of the banks mm-hmm. in the United States, is is underwater. That they're technically insolvent. They're losing money, and they're continuing to lose money. In the United States as well, as well as around the world in terms of debts, the U.S. is above $34 trillion in debt. They've added $3 trillion in debt in the last eight months alone. So if you're starting to feel like things are happening quickly, that there's velocity, just think about that for a minute. $3 trillion in eight months alone. This is only going to get worse. It's only going to get faster and faster. And the debts don't matter until they matter. Mm-hmm. And they're starting to matter a whole lot because the servicing of the debt I think is above one trillion, and if I'm not mistaken, from the last time I checked the U.S. debt clock, I think that they they only bring in like three trillion in tax revenue, mm-hmm. or a little over three trillion in tax revenue. So imagine a third of your income going to service debt. Just think about that for a minute. Canada, listen to this stat, Jerry. Just before we started the show, if there was a twenty percent decline in home prices there would be $46 billion in mortgage loans underwater. As it stands right now amongst the six major Canadian banks, there's $2 billion in mortgages with negative equity. So I am sure that the Bank of Canada is not rushing to raise interest rates at this point, but we know that once they lower them, they're throwing in the towel on inflation. So I would expect inflation to get worse. So we have to start looking for answers in how to deal with with where we protect our wealth. Mm -hmm. How do we uh, reduce exposure to risk? And the stock market looks pretty risky at this point with everything going up. And I don't know how you feel, Jerry, but it feels like a recession to me. I know the authorities don't want to tell us that, but it certainly feels like it. And how do we protect our wealth? How are we going to protect the life savings that we put into other people's hands? at banking institutions who have told you for years that gold is volatile, Mm -hmm. that gold's volatile, which in the last 20 years, gold has had two down years in in Canadian dollars, literally in the last 20 years. And somehow it's volatile. Mm -hmm. So one of the things, one of the things we want to talk about is the ETF outflows and the difference between having a gold and silver investment versus having actual physical gold in your portfolio. So, well, and it's only Friday when we're taping the show. I mean, uh, we're not even getting into the politics of things, which is, is also really heating up in the world. So let's talk about what's been happening in the precious metals market. Gold and silver have been um, pretty much just flat on the week, kind of a lull to sleep, if you will, uh, slight downward movement, nothing crazy. I don't think people are going to be really, really interested in this market till we're breaking new highs because, as we all know, seeing is believing, Jerry. So once gold is trading at uh, over $2,100 an ounce, people will be interested. You know, why buy it low when you can buy high? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Same thing with silver. Why buy silver at 23 when it's going to be so much more exciting to buy at 35 and 40 and $50 an ounce? So tell us what's been happening in the markets as you see them, Jerry. 
Well, we look at the prices of gold and silver, moderately flat on the week. We were anticipating some data that to, that was to come out this week, which it did. And to no surprise, the GDP figures in the States came out uh, yesterday, smashing expectations. Uh, day before that, Bank of Canada, as you mentioned, they're not going to raise interest rates. They're, they're going to be forfeiting the battle on inflation. And to understand, it's not about what the central planners, central bankers are saying. It's about what they're doing, and we look at what they're doing. They're acquiring and they're accumulating physical gold, even, even silver, in their coffers. So the, we looked at the, the, the GDP, the figure that came out this week, and it was really remarkable because when the GDP smash figures, that usually means it's inflationary which means the yields would start moving higher. But in fact, the Treasury yields started to drop and gold actually started moving higher. So that was a remarkable move. And in looking at the U.S. GDP figures, um, it's a PhD, uh, E.J. Antoni, and this was accompanying the Cobasi letter that came out shortly after. Has anyone else noticed this from the fourth quarter GDP report? Annualized interest on the federal debt now exceeds $1 trillion dollar dollars and it's projected to breach three trillion dollars annualized rate by quarter in in 10 years it's an insane and unsustainable um and kobesi writes even if you adjust for inflation interest is on track to hit two trillion dollars per year in real terms in 2030 but all of this is just you know they're going to continue to give us the narrative this is going to be a soft or no landing that you can do no wrong to the stock markets. The stock market will bubble higher as we're seeing the this magnificent seven stocks carrying the stock market to bubble territory. This is bubble territory that we're seeing, and all stock bu bubbles lead to crashes. And as long as you ignore the fundamentals in the world, that if as long as you can ignore that the money's still being created out of nothing, that the debt being can't be paid back, then everything looks great. Keep doing what you're doing. Send more money. <laughs> right? Send more money, print more money. If you, but if you start to actually look at the real world and what the real world costs and you know how the real estate market looks or how the debt market looks, what inflation's doing, you realize, wait a minute, this we are hurtling towards a crisis, that the financial system is incredibly fragile and the crisis could come from anywhere, Yeah, from absolutely anywhere the rug could be pulled. The printing doesn't happen in just the U.S. It's happening around the world. The world's richest economy is piling on more debt with no end in sight. And why does this matter? We zoom into the U.S. public debt, which has surged during the, the lockdowns and recently passed $34 trillion. It's a record when accounting for inflation. Public borrowing is setting records. Medicare, Social Security, all the every, you know, it begs to question how solvent are these things? How solvent are the are the pensions? And then you have a big the, one. This is a massive one. And by the numbers, if we look at the debt, the U.S. federal debt that has risen if back in 1923 from 403 billion to today, 34 trillion dollars this year, the U.S. debt to GDP ratio is at 125 percent. In Japan, obviously, it's a zombie economy in Japan. There's 255% debt-to-GDP ratio. In China, 83% debt-to-GDP uh, ratio. That means that if your debt-to-GDP is 120 to 1, it means that you are creating $120 in debt for every dollar that you make. It is insolvent at best. And you're making the money based on the workforce, the taxpayer, less and less good quality jobs. If you go through the GDP figures, less and less people are working two, sometimes three jobs to make ends meet. And this is unsustainable. And this is the reason why we had, we had people screaming this week, Jeremy, Bill Gross, who is the renowned co-founder and former chief economy, investment officer at PIMCO, Pacific Investment Management Company, he advised the Federal Reserve, the U.S. Central Bank, to immediately seize its balance sheet reduction and start cutting interest rates now within the next 6 to 12 months. He spoke to Bloomberg Television. Bill Gross criticized the Fed's current approach of tightening as inappropriate under the present economics conditions. He strongly believes that changing this policy and lowering interest rates soon is crucial to prevent a looming recession. Well, Jeremy, when you're paying 
a trillion dollars in interest. We can't even fathom that number, can no, we? No, you cannot fathom it. It is, you, no, there's so, no fathoming it, not, not at all, not at all. And so ultimately, the fact is, is that the dollar is worthless. We're spinning our wheels, pretending it's all working. It's not working. A crash is going to come. We don't know what that's going to look like. Are we going to be uh, seized up like it was in 2008? Is it going to be an ice nine situation like Jim Rickards talks about? Is it going to be uh, the great taking that people are, are watching and, and talking about? Or are you going to be able to take opportunity and get through this? Money's going to get very expensive. It's going to get very hard to come by. Wait till you hear what we have to say in the next segment about the commodities boom that we are on the precipice of. So if you want to hold an actual asset that is real money and been money for thousands of years and is a great place to store wealth and preserve wealth, you want to look at physical gold and physical silver, not an investment in physical gold and physical silver. You have to understand the difference, and we're going to talk about that in the next segment as well. You want to give us a call. The number is one silver The website's guildhallwealth.com. Get physical, hold in your hand gold and silver within a registered account, an RSP, a TFSA. You want to buy it, take it home, have it stored in an IROC-approved vault facility, fully insured, underwritten by Lloyds of London, with ease of liquidity. We are the people to help you to do that. You want to look for something that is durable and dependable and will last a lifetime. We're talking about quality, not BS currency that has no quality. We want to go towards quality. So give us a call. Again, this is The Real Money Show on 640 Toronto. So much more to come. Stay with us. Welcome back to The Real Money Show, the number one eight seven seven eight silver the website, guildhallwealth.com. There is a limited amount of physical gold and physical silver in the world. Estimates are that there's essentially 5 billion ounces of gold, maybe a little bit more. You can only add to that supply by about 1.5 to 1.75% a year. In silver, if we go by the Silver Institute, there's essentially 2 billion ounces above ground. And just to remember that there's 8 billion people on the planet, and right now the ratio meaning how many ounces of silver it takes to buy an ounce of gold, is close to 90 to 1. Now, do you want to know how much silver actually comes out of the ground for every ounce of gold right now? I do. It's less than 8, which is why there's a deficit. And if you want solar power, if you want electric cars, and if you want all of the electronic and digital devices that you've come to love in your day-to-day -day life, like switching on a light switch. You need silver. And the world is going to need a whole lot of it that isn't there. And we are hurtling towards the point where there's nothing coming out of the ground, there's no investment in those mines, and you're going to need significantly sustained higher prices of silver before any of those mines really start rocking it and start moving up. So Jerry, let's talk about what HSBC is saying on CNBC recently. This week, HSBC's, he was the chief economist, Paul Bloxham. He told CNBC that the commodities markets are in a super squeeze. Cue that word there, the squeeze is back on. And higher prices could be here to stay. The commodity markets are in that squeeze, supply disruptions, and lack of investment in the in the mining spaces. It's going to get worse as geopolitical and supply constraints abound. A commodity super squeeze is denoted by higher prices driven by supply constraints and more robust growth in demand, he explained. If it's a supply constraint that's driving high commodity prices, it's a very different story for global growth. And if we look at data that came in from Metals Focus just this week, the all-in sustaining costs of gold producers broke the all-time record high. And according to Metals Focus Gold Mines, although inflation, again, this inflation number, the costs, uh, the input costs of gold production has shown signs of easing, sure. The AISC, the all-in sustaining costs, continue to, draw, to rise due to some operational constraints. That's a squeeze. 
So like like saying, opposite like what are we talking about the price of gas the price of labor um, the price to get regular regulations passed like what all of it inflation the real world inflation impacts even the miners to get the gold and silver out of the ground you will need more and more workforce you will need more manpower you will need more energy you will need, you need more diesel but how are you going to get that when the green new deal scam has erupted, everyone wants to go into the new green. How are you gonna get the silver out? You're gonna bring in your solar excavator and go deeper into the earth? No, you're not. You're gonna get more diesel, and as a result, all in sustaining costs are gonna to continue to rise, even though the narrative of inflation is lowering, absolutely not. The cost of living and the cost of um, keeping a business profitable is rising, even though that narrative of inflation is at 3%, no, it's not. So so the, the key here, from what I'm hearing about that is a supply constraint, commodity constrained, because of cost to actually get the get the stuff in the world out of the ground to you, right? The cost to actually Ship, get it somewhere. Shipping. Now, we, we often talk about the Federal Reserve here. We talk about the crazy policies in, in government and whatnot. And anyone who's been watching Canadian politics this week, I'm going to connect the two has has noticed that there seems to be a growing trend amongst the leaders of this country and other countries as well as the federal reserve and the banking industry and the financial industry and the media of just acting oblivious to everything that's the that's my theme i i'm seeing everyone acting completely oblivious to reality even when you're caught red-handed cheating they say that wasn't me mm -hmm. what was that song in the 90s it wasn't me yeah. right you caught me red-handed but it, it wasn't me right <laughs> that's, right. That, that's, that's what that's, that's legacy media this is and not only that but now all week i've been seeing these reports from legacy media they're all everyone's getting fired oh yeah everywhere sports illustrated la times i mean we know cbc uh, kicked a kicked a bunch to the door, and nobody's interested in the oblivious news that's being pushed on them, because they live in the real world where prices are rising everywhere. So don't tell me we're not in a recession. Mm -hmm. Even people who have a ton of money go out for dinner, and you know what I'm hearing this week from my clients? I think I said it, and everyone started to agree. It's not fun to go out for dinner. Mm -hmm. It's not fun. It's not fun to be charged a whack load of money to buy some alcohol and then a whack load of taxes on top of it. Bottles of water are like 15 bucks, yeah. right? We're not making 50% more, right? And everyone is feeling it. And then I start to watch what's happening with the homeless situation in Toronto as well. And it drives me absolutely crazy that they're going to spend tens of millions of dollars changing a name, mm -hmm. right? Why? If you're so worried about being on this land, why are you letting all these other people in? It doesn't make any sense. But raise the property tax 10%. Raise property tax, well, and you give yourself and give yourself a give yourself a raise. Right. Cuz it's not your money, you don't care about anybody else's money. You like sucking off the system, right? So, why we have to be wary of people who don't care about your money. You have to be you have to start taking care of yourself. Yeah. You have to start being aware of your own money and your own wealth and taking care of it yourself and maybe take a look at the relationships you have as well to say is this person doing great for me right this oblivion people are moving away from it it's not a you can't sit here and be oblivious anymore you have to answer and That's they're right. and these people are going to answer for all of the things that they've done don't yeah. don't think they're not going to get away with it but let's talk about in terms of a, being oblivious what it takes if you continue to go with the relationships that you have, right, and not take care of it yourself, and look, we don't manage gold. We don't manage it. You buy it, you own it, and that's it. Mm -hmm. Gold's up 400% in the last two decades. Why? Because there's only 5 billion above ground. There's 8 billion people on the planet. Not everyone can own some gold. So there's a limited supply, and it's real money. So those who appreciate real money instead of debt want to have some of that in their portfolio. China wants it. 
they they added 287 tons of it to their portfolio in the last six months or so. so. There's no slowing down there. And there's no slowing down. So it's about quality assets. It's about real assets. It's about not being oblivious. And it's time to take some action and look at it, right? So maybe think about those relationships and maybe start to consider having a hedge. It's not about having all 100% gold and silver. It's about having a little bit, right? So let's, so give us a call. Please do. one <laughs> <laughs> 8 silver the website guildhallwealth.com. We help people buy physical precious metals and hold it inside their registered accounts, held in a vault outside the banking system. Okay? They can go there, hold it in their hand. That's right. If you can't hold it, you don't own it. That's the litmus test. So, Jerry, I want to quickly cover two things here. Yeah. Let's talk about if there is a black swan event, another crisis like 2008, which we all believe we're heading towards, what does it look like to be able to recover? I remember talking to a, a manager at Edward Jones, not to out anybody or dox anyone. This was after 2008, and after five years, he said to me, yeah, it took five years to get back to break even. And instantly in my mind, I'm like, what about inflation at 5%? You're, you took five years to get to even, but you haven't beat the other 25% in inflation every year. You're just looking at nominal numbers. So what does it take for someone if they don't take action if they decide I can handle whatever comes my way with patience, what is it going to take for them to get back their money? That's a very good question. It's one that we have to ask ourselves very soberly, and this is a sobriety alert. Um, some great research came out from Mike Maloney's team at Gold Silver, and I highly recommend it. Knowing that we are at stock market bubbles, that they're bubbling right now, and all these bubbles do lead to crashes. What they did was they researched the four biggest crashes in the S&P 5, over the last 100 years, they measured it, the time it, it took to return to its nominal price. The results are sobering. The real recovery times are much, much longer than many investors are aware. So look at what you're doing. Find out what your, what your portfolio is holding. Is it just an investment? If it's just an investment or a financial asset, you are not in control. With physical, your money cannot be canceled and your money will be protected. So the table that they show is very sobering. Um, from, nine, from 1929 to 1954, there was a crash. It took 25 years to recover nominally, plus another four years uh, to reach the same purchasing power. And in 1970 to uh, 1972, the other crash, into 1980, it took seven years and eight months to recover nominally, plus another seven years for that asset, for that portfolio to reach the same purchasing power. And in 2000, it took another seven years. And then from October of 2007, the 08 crisis, to 2013, that's six years plus another six months. So in other words, when, we, when the nominal price of the S&P climbed back to the prior price, it had taken so long, so much longer, that the proceeds would never, would no longer buy as much. Your brokerage statement might show the same dollar amount, but the purchasing power of those dollars has significantly been eroded. It's a very sobering realization. So what? Gold to the rescue. What did gold do? Did gold preserve purchasing power during those periods? Let's take a look, he says. Gold didn't just preserve purchasing power, it actually grew it. During those recessions, those crash periods, Gold's performance, not just protected, but it went up 600% on average, 300% uh, on average. And you'll also notice that the longer the recovery period, the better gold did. This underscores gold's ability to preserve purchasing power as well as hedge your portfolio, grow your portfolio, especially right now when we're looking at this overvalued stock market bubble, it's going to burst. And when it does, your money has to be there for you. It's not going to be canceled. You're in control with physical, segregated, allocated gold in your possession. And you don't have to be an expert to own physical gold and silver. It's just an asset. You buy it and hold it. Did, did you say that in some cases the purchasing power went up 300% and in some cases it went up 600%? Yeah. Inflation-adjusted gold performance. That's correct. So by owning gold through those periods, you actually increased your purchasing power by three to 600%. Absolutely. That actually is in line with what we talked about a lot on the show about what happened in the 70s. It does. Right? From 76 to 80, what it did. 
And also, you know, look, gold went from two hundred dollars an ounce, two fifty an ounce in two thousand one, and by two thousand eleven, it was trading at two thousand dollars an ounce. So consider those gains for yourself and wonder why you don't have any in your portfolio to have something that, with that kind of strong heavyweight performance. Why wouldn't you want to have a little bit on gold, right? You have a little bit on your equities, have a little bit on gold. The number, 18778silver. The website, guildhallwealth.com. Stick around, guys. There's a lot more to come and some really good stuff coming up. So it's The Real Money Show on 640 Toronto. Welcome back to The Real Money Show. The number, 18778silver. And the website, guildhallwealth.com. In the last segment, we were just talking about what it's going to take if you don't act now and you let another crisis, black swan event happen to you without realizing that we're in a situation where the financial authorities, the heads of state are all acting oblivious to what's happening. It's time for you to take control and action and power for yourself. Now, if you go to the financial markets and you ask your advisor about gold, they're gonna say, knee-jerk reaction, don't do it, it's volatile, and I'll tell you why. No offense to anyone who's in that industry, but you want to work in that industry because you like being part of a group, right? Let's be honest. You like the safety of that. Mm -hmm. And whether you know it or not, there is an indoctrination there to what the power of the dollar is versus its mortal enemy, which is gold. And your banker of all bankers, JP Morgan, told you that when he said, gold is money and all else is credit. Now, if you go, if you have a hundred thousand dollars in the bank, can you go and take out a hundred thousand dollars cash? I didn't think so. So, what is it in the bank? What is it? You're a creditor to the bank. Is it your money? What is it? Is it even money? They're using it for other things. Now, there is a difference between gold ownership and gold investment. Exposure. We don't do gold investments here. We do gold ownership. You buy it. You own it. It gets put in your own, especially with the registered accounts. It gets put in your own sub account at the vault, which is outside the banking system. It's literally just a vault. Its only job is to store and secure your product. That sub account is segregated from all other sub accounts. We give you the serial numbers. You can go to the vault, personally hold the product in your hand. If you can't hold it, you don't own it. But then there's all these other vehicles, Jerry, ETFs certificates, pool accounts, gold-backed funds. Did I mention ETFs? <laughs> now, in the ETF, this is, this is going to blow your minds. We broke a story in, in our community. Well, we didn't break it, but a, a story broke in our community back in, what, 2001? When we had the silver squeeze. And at that moment, when silver broke $30 an ounce, they changed the prospectus on the ETFs. They said, we don't need to actually have gold in here anymore, gold and mm -hmm. silver in here. And lo and behold, we're seeing a pattern emerge. Jerry, tell us about what we're seeing right now with the ETFs. Over the course of the last few weeks, this is the beginning of 2024, and all you're hearing is that gold outflows out of the ETF has dented the outlook on gold, but we're hitting all-time highs. Why is everyone fleeing this, this ETF, the, the specifically the GLD, which is down 2.2% month over month? Um, the mainstream media is saying, will investors return to gold ETFs when the Fed starts to cut? That ETFs are backed by physical gold and that these ETFs make up a considerable part of the global gold market and are one of the preferred ways for retail investors to gain exposure to the metal. Not ownership, just exposure. Well, one method for buying gold and one that has been promoted is to use an exchange-traded fund. ETFs are digital contracts nominally backed by gold, but are not actually. But they are the one, the, there is, this is the one that is the most promoted ETF in the world. It's that GLD. It's the great dissuasion. You don't need to buy the physical. You could just buy the ETF. It's as good as gold. You get the exposure. You get the exposure. But just because those who own the gold ETF right now, the GL GLD, has never written, uh, read the prospectus, I'm going to bring the prospectus to you. And let's go through it really quickly. Because did you know 
On page 7 of the GLD prospectus, it indicates that the shares will be continually devalued over time, that the amount of gold represented by the shares will continue to be reduced during the life of the trust due to the sales of gold necessary to pay the trust expenses. So as the trust's costs are going through the roof, they are the ETF outflows that you're seeing are actually sales of the gold to keep the trust solvent. But don't worry, because the, because the baskets of GLD can just be created out of thin air with cash instead of physical gold. It says that in, in their prospectus. On page 20. Can you repeat that, please? What does it say on page 20? Baskets of GLD can be recreated. So even though there's, there's outflows of real physical golds going somewhere else, don't worry. We can create more baskets with cash, okay. with cheap cash instead of physical gold. That's found on page 20. Further, the amount of GLD shares can be inflated by cash. It does not represent physical gold. It's artificially inflated the supply of the gold. So you actually impact the gold prices. The Fed creating money, currency, lowering interest rates, and combined with ETFs and derivatives has directed, redirected investors from owning physical gold to the pumped up stock market and derivatives and ETFs. All the while, central banks have been buying physical gold because of Basel III rules. They have to get real. There's no more paper. There's no more unallocated. What's the Basel III rules? Basel III rules, risk-weighted assets, gold is money, gold is equal to cash, and all of the unallocated gold. For example, the paper to silver ratio right now is 390 to 1. They have created, out of thin air, out of cash baskets, 390 ETS for somewhere in the world there is one ounce of silver. And then paper to gold ratio right now is hovering around 120 to 1. So for every one ounce of gold, they have created 120 baskets, supply out of thin air. That is coming to an end. And he who has the gold makes the rule. This is the money that you cannot control. It's the safe haven that insulates you and guards you against these lies, and the lies are being exposed. And this is why there's a huge, huge shift from the gold ETF market to the Bitcoin ETF market, which we'll get into a, a, another time. But this is a big eye opener. And ultimately, this is this is part of a makeup of we don't want you to own physical gold. We have an off ramp for you. We have a way to to uh, release the pressure on the pressure cooker right and also acquire the gold for ourselves ultimately they're probably selling off the gold to cover their own assets and because they change the prospectus they don't need actual gold in there so you're buying gold into a gold market with your money and they're buying the physical and taking it off and probably selling it to cover other assets the number one eight seven seven eight silver the website guildhallwealth.com of course that was speculation bottom line though there's do you really own it that's the that's the case with gold with guildhall you know you own it you get your inventory report you can go and personally audit or you buy it and take it home that's right that you can't be more clear about the ownership when you buy it and take it home these assets don't belong in the guildhall balance sheets they're not assets that we can use to lever up and get more investments out of it these metals are yours they're not on our balance sheets these are on yours so these are fully allocated and segregated accounts all under your name Uncomplicated, safe and simple. You give us a call, one eight seven seven eight silver the website guildhallwealth.com. More to come on The Real Money Show on 640 Toronto. Welcome back to The Real Money Show, the number one eight seven seven eight silver and the website guildhallwealth.com. You know, if you're going to own insurance, you don't make an investment in an insurance company. You actually have to go out and get that physical insurance. The policy, right? The policy. So if you're going to drive, you want car insurance. You want life insurance, home insurance. You need portfolio insurance, and that's where the physical gold and silver market comes into play. So all of these other things that we were talking about in the last segment with regard to the ETF or all of these other derivatives or things that give you quote-unquote exposure or things that have counterparty risk, meaning do you own it directly? No? Okay, then you have a counterparty risk. That's an investment. That's not an asset ownership. You want to keep it easy. Owning the actual asset is what's dependable, right? And in this time where we have limited resources and unlimited money, unlimited cash, unlimited debt, which is becoming more and more expensive, it's getting real. And it's going to get real very quickly. And so we're encouraging people to take this time to consider it 
and not wait to see when gold breaks new highs and not wait to see when silver breaks new highs. Think about why they don't want you to own gold and silver because it's real. It's out of the system. They can't steal from you. They can't take from you with inflation if it's in an, an asset like gold and silver. And if there's 300 pieces of paper for every ounce of silver and there's 100 pieces of paper for every ounce of gold, you can see how much they're trying to divert your attention and what it can do to the price, which means at some point they use the idea of the beach ball underwater. You're going to have a major reaction. So not only is it going to protect wealth as it has, gold's up 400 plus percent in the last 20 years, silver's up like 370 percent in the last 20 years. So it'll do its job, but as Mike Maloney talked about, Jerry, that you mentioned, it might get you an extra 300% on top of your purchasing power through these type of times. So being aware of it is key. Now we encourage people to crawl, walk, run. If you don't have any gold and silver, pick up a few ounces, start small, get your feet wet, see what it feels like, what the pricing looks like, go through the process. You might decide, hey, I want to I want to put something into the T, the TFSA. I want to move over a lira that uh, that I've been ignoring for 20 years and I need to start making it work for me, right? Your thoughts, Jerry? Those are the thoughts that we have. These are the accounts that you cannot overlook. You have to reassess, especially knowing that we have lost so much time due to loss of purchasing power. If the markets are showing bubble territory and if there is another potential downturn in the mar markets like Mike Maloney showed, we don't have time for recovery. Now is the time to really reassess the portfolio and reallocate into safe haven, into an area that will perform during times of stagflation that is undervalued and unparticipated in. When the market moves at least 1% of all that money sloshing around in the global financial world and the assets in the global financial system, just 1% of all that money jumps into the finite silver market that is already scarce, and you eliminate, eliminate all above-ground ounces. And in terms of supply and de demand, Economics 101, if you run out of supply, the price of the physical silver market goes through the roof. The price of the gold market also goes through the roof. Now, you mentioned supply there, so let's talk about something that came out this uh, over the past few weeks, which is the theme of the population trap that we're now officially in within Canada. You mentioned before the show that being in a population trap is like being in a Ponzi scheme and that there's limited resources, right? But unlimited amount of people at this point fighting for those resources and it's inflationary. Is that correct? That's did I get it right? Yeah, the mouth is catastrophe. It's when the population exceeds resources and that's what we're seeing. And that's something that the, the Bank of Canada this week, they kept rates flat at 5%. But during the week, they came out stating, stating the Bank of Canada that Canada has entered its first population trap in modern history. This is in line with what we're seeing right now in population and border and the walls and everything that's happening in the States. Okay, so they say we're in a population trap. What does that mean for me as a Canadian? Well, what it means is, according to the study that was done by National Bank of Canada, the economists, they claim that Canada is caught in a population trap and it needs to rein this in in immigration significantly down to escape to, to escape it. They're, they're alluding that the Bank of Canada, which has coined this term, um, is leading towards a, a Malthus catast catastrophe, where the growing population, and in our opinion, and the, the opinion of many people, it's a strategy for getting votes. It's a strategy for this Ponzi scheme, because what we're seeing is a Ponzi scheme where it just becomes totally unsustainable in the truest sense of the word. Canada has been in a per capita recession for quite some time, but we expand, but we are continuing to expand our economic growth, our GDP, by importing more people and avoiding a technical recession, right? They, they revised and the- And also they government spend. And they government spend. But the interest bill is now similar to both defense and health expenditures. What is larger? The pensions, the social security, eventually, this fails and a Ponzi scheme collapses as the population trap is complete. In all previous such collapses, one asset prevails. Well, two, gold and silver. This is the asset class that will prevail in, the, in this Ponzi scheme of population growth just to, uh, you know, to 
This so a Ponzi scheme meaning a, po a Ponzi scheme meaning you have to bring in new new buyers, new investors to pay out the others. So they're bringing in more people to try to mask and obfuscate and also try to bring in more um, excuses to, to spend, et cetera. And ultimately what it's showing is that there's not enough. It's an inverted pyramid that you've got too many people, not enough resources, and the debts are only growing and growing. And in the past, population traps have been a, a, a signal of the very end. That's right. So look at it as we are in the end game territory. How are you going to protect against that? Well, you know how we feel about it. If you want to find out some more information, you want to chat with us, give us a call. The number is one eight seven seven eight silver The website's guildhallwealth.com. And as you can tell, we love chatting about this stuff. So give us a call. We're happy to walk you through and see how uh, potentially gold and silver could work for you. Jerry, thank you for bringing so much great info to the table this week. Um, I learned a lot. I thought this was a fantastic show. Just too much information <laughs> this week. I hope uh, the listeners got a great amount of info from it. If you've missed a show, check us out on YouTube. Check us out on X next week. Very exciting. Joe Salente is going to be joining us here on The Real Money Show on 640 Toronto. Thank you, everyone. Talk to you next week.